to say thanks very much. And most of you all know John, and uh, John was of course first elected MLA for Malahat Juan de Fuca in 2005, re-elected uh, in 2009, and again in 2013. He became the leader of the BC NDP in 2014. And of course one of the most important things is that John attended our open house at the training center last year, last June, right, where we taught him how to run some of the equipment. But you know, he's still got a few hours to go before we can turn him from a politician into an operating engineer. But, but with, that, with that introduction, John, really thanks very much for taking the time to show up and uh, please have you up. A big round of applause for John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody. It's great to, to be here on a sunny Saturday morning to uh, talk about building BC, to talk about putting you back to work, to talk about project labor agreements, and to talk about why I believe that we need a government that puts you first, puts British Columbians first, and gets us back on track to be the great province we all want to be. We've had, Brian, we've had, uh, we've had 16 years of BC Liberals. That's 16 years of declining union density, 16 years of stagnant wage growth, 16 years of a reduction in programs for the most vulnerable in our society. Just last budget, just a few weeks ago, Christy Clark found 250 million bucks for a tax break for millionaires. Any millionaires in the room today? Just the one? No, two, there's two. You got a tax break, brothers. Congratulations. Uh, people with disabilities, the most vulnerable people in our society, got a $77 a month increase in their uh, pensions, but 55 bucks of that was taken back when they canceled their bus passes. So bus passes for vulnerable people are too expensive, we just can't afford that right now, but you two millionaires here and the rest of them out in British Columbia, they got a, a tax break. 250 million bucks worth. And that, in my opinion, brothers and sisters, is just plain wrong, and I think most British Columbians agree with that. Now, we've just finished six weeks in the Legislative Assembly, and uh, I know you're all watching it as it's happening in real time. I used to say the only person that was watching me was my mom, and now she's passed away. So my, my ratings are really low right now when I'm standing in the legislature. But I, I, I tuned in, I was on the road, and I tuned in to watch the Ministry of Agriculture estimates. Now you're thinking, well, why would you watch the Ministry of Agriculture debates if you're traveling around talking about, you know, building BC, talking about our resource economy, talking about creating jobs. And Christy created a job in the agriculture sector, and Lana Popham, our, our spokesperson for agriculture, was asking the minister why it was that there was a new chair of the Turkey Marketing Board. Anyone ever heard of the Turkey Marketing Board? Apparently it's a plum position. And it was given uh, after great consultation. After great, Wayne's got a good shot right there. Uh, after great consultation, the job was given to a fellow named Phil Hochstein. Now, except when I think of turkeys, I think of Phil Hochstein. So it now makes a big sense to me. When I saw it on paper, I thought Phil Hochstein's been given a patronage appointment by the BC Liberals. I thought, oh God, there he's going to screw up apprenticeships again. He's going to screw up. But now he's screwing up turkeys. And I guess, in Christie's world, that's okay. That's okay. Now, we've got a lot of stuff going on in British Columbia, or so I see whenever the Premier is standing, the lights go on, the photo op starts, and words come out of her mouth, and she talks about jobs. She talks about 100,000 jobs when it came to liquefied natural gas. And yet, when we went into the legislature to codify, to, to put in place a, a development agreement, not a labor agreement, but a development agreement, there were no guarantees for BC jobs. There were no guarantees for BC procurement. There were no guarantees for anybody except Petronas, the foreign company, that was going to do us a favor and come and develop the resources that belong to us. In my world, in a John Horgan world, in a BC NDP world, if we're going to give concessions to companies to come and develop the resources that belong to all of us, those concessions have to be, have to be tagged with jobs for British Columbians. They have to be tagged with opportunities for BC businesses. Now the only business that's taking off with respect to LNG is the consulting firm of Gordon Wilson and Company. Because he's getting 150 grand a year to go around BC and tell companies how great LNG is going to be for them. Now I was the energy critic of the official opposition for a decade. 
I know a lot about oil and gas. I'm a big supporter of oil and gas. I believe that we have an opportunity to take our collective wealth and make sure that we all benefit from it. But I'm reminded of something that Tommy Douglas said when he was the Premier of Saskatchewan. He was in negotiations with Imperial Oil at the time. And this was back in the 60s, so long before OPEC, long before gas got to the prices that were gas in the pump, got to the prices that we see today. And there was a big headline in the paper that, uh, that Imperial was leaving the province. So Tommy Douglas got in front of the camera and he said, I have good news and I have bad news. Imperial oil is leaving Saskatchewan, but the oil is staying here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is what I want you to remember. These resources belong to us. Our coal, our metals, our minerals, our natural gas, our forestry belongs to us. And it's our obligation, I believe, as political representatives and union representatives to make sure that everyone in our community knows that when we're developing those resources, it should be in the interest of the people who live here. Not temporary foreign workers, not Albertans first, Saskatchewan representatives first, BC first. That's my commitment to you, and I'm going to stand by it. Christy Clark in 2013 promised that there would be eight new mines in British Columbia by 2015 and nine startups of old mines. That's 17 all in. And here we are in 2016, a year after that commitment, and 2,400 workers are not working in mining that were in 2014, many of them members of the operating engineers. It was just recently that uh, HD Mining shut down and sent their temporary foreign workers home, but last month, the only people mining in Tumblr Ridge were temporary foreign workers. That's the BC Liberal Jobs Plan. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with opportunities to get in front of cameras and make stuff up. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to lead my party and I want to lead this province to make sure that the people in this room and people in communities right across BC are getting the benefits of the natural abundance that we have here. That's the way it's been in the past. That's the way it should be in the future. I'm going to build roads. I'm going to build four lanes from Kamloops to the Alberta border and it's going to be operating engineers to do that work. I'm going to build bridges. going to be operating engineers that build those bridges. We're going to build it, lots of transit, lots of transit. We're not going to force people to make a Hobson's choice between paying more taxes or being stuck in their car for two hours a day because of gridlock. We need to address transportation issues in the Lower Mainland. We can do it. We're going to do it with operating engineers. We're going to do it with union labor. When I worked, when I worked for Mike Harcourt, I worked on a thing called the Columbia Basin Trust. And in that, it's 20 years ago now, and over the course of 20 years in the Kootenays, we built three dams. We built the Keenly Side Dam, we built the brilliant expansion, and we just finished, we, the people of BC, the Juanita expansion. All with allied hydro agreements in place, all making sure that local procurement was the first order of business, all ensured that local workers got jobs, and on the Juanita project, 20 years after Mike Harcourt made the decision to go ahead with the Columbia Basin Trust, there were 350 skilled building trades workers and 50 apprenticeships on site. That's how you build BC. That's how you make the transition from this generation to the next. You don't do it by going low bid, and you don't do it with going with Phil Hochstein and the turkeys at clack. That's not how I work. That's not how you work. Now, on site C, Christy said, this is going to be a good deal for British Columbians, it's going to be a good deal for building trades. And uh, Brian said, just recently, <laughs> i got to say this, 1.7, no, this is good, 1.7, yo, yeah, whenever someone's going to quote me, I go, uh-oh, that's the same response. What did he say? Did I say that? This is what Brian said. The largest project a BC government has ever undertaken with the least, the least amount of commitment to BC workers. Imagine that. Christy Clark is out spending your money and she's not doing anything to make sure that you get the work. That's not how BC has been built. She likes to pretend that she's W.A.C. Bennett. W.A.C. Bennett built the Two River Policy. He built our hydroelectric system with union labor. This is not how Christy Clark is going. She's going with Clack and the Turkeys and Hochstein when there are a whole bunch of people ready, able and willing to work 
union members, building trade members that are sitting idle while other people less qualified and, and from other jurisdictions are getting that work. I won't stand for that. You're not going to stand for that. Brian's not going to stand for that. And in the next election, which is 60 weeks from now, I will make commitments directly to you and to people in this community that we are going to build BC the way we built it in the past, with British Columbians first. That's my commitment today. It will be my commitment outside of this room in every community in British Columbia because we can't back away. We can't back away from the Hochstein mentality. If we do, we will all lose. British Columbia will lose. None of us want to see that happen. And again, I know people aren't riveted by this stuff, but when I get up and ask a question of the Premier about education, I'm a firm believer in public education. I was failing out of uh, high school, 15 years old, 16 years old. I was heading in the wrong direction. And public education, teachers grabbed me and pulled me back on track, allowed me to go on and to get a couple of university degrees and stand before you as the leader of the official opposition. And it was because of the great equalizer of public education that I was able to do that. I am able to do that today, to stand here before you. When she says no to John Horgan and the NDP, I want you to say yes. Thank you very much. John, I just want to say thanks very much. I mean, it was just, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes this morning. And I can tell you, I'm all pumped up. I'm ready to go for the rest of our meeting now. Yeah, yeah thanks very much.